Hi everybody and welcome to episode 12 and firstly I'm going to say really really sorry that I can't be here live. I'm having to pre-record this um, this video because for I, I double booked before I even started this series of 12 weeks I'd bought a ticket for the theatre to go with my son Dan to the Theatre Royal in Newcastle and take him to see an Inspector Calls, which is a play that he's studying for his GCSE English, so he really wanted to go. So I'm having to compromise and pre-record the video in the midst of moving house. So again, when I started this series, I did not know where episode 12 would end up. I thought I'd be in the house. I am, we are in the house, kind of. So we've not physically moved all the large stuff in yet. We have had deliveries of new furniture, we've had decorators in, we've had uh, electricians in putting new lighting up for us. Um, so waiting for Sky at the minute, BT's in, it's like a process. How anybody does this in one day, I don't know. But it's a big move for us because not only have we purchased the new house, we've purchased all new furniture. So you've got that coming from all sorts of different suppliers like Oak Furniture Land and um, Barker and Stonehouse, all those different places delivering and they're all delivering at different times with different things and there's tons of packaging and skip runs and so it's been chaos now since we got the keys on Friday. So last week was a difficult week because I was chasing the money and then Friday we did actually get the keys and everything was okay. So since then, in amongst moving house and in amongst everything that's happened, um, I had to call an ambulance out for myself on Saturday night, well my husband did, because I had what I can only describe as the worst migraine ever. Um, and I've suffered with migraines from 18 and I'm now 55 and I've never known anything like it. I actually thought I was going to die. It was into my ear, down my back and neck, down my right arm. They think it's to do with the surgery I had on my neck because that's the third one I've had in three months, but that was the worst. Um, and the ambulance came out, they stabilised me and it's taken me three days to, to properly recover from that. And since coming off naproxen um, because I've got an ulcer, um, my knees have given up the arthritis. I've got osteoarthritis in my knees and my knees are absolutely knackered. And I've been running up and down stairs 400 times a day with things and unpacking. So all in all, I'm a wreck. <laughs> so, so I'm here anyway, pre-recording because I've got to go to the theatre with Dan tonight. And I think that will actually be quite nice and a little bit of self-care. And tomorrow, all of the big furniture moves over and that's us completely moved in. And then the difficult task of unpacking starts. So that's my update on the moving into my new home. I was going to do um, a virtual tour of the home for you today live, but honestly you don't want to see cardboard boxes and mess everywhere. So I'm going to do that next week. So I'm going to do a virtual video tour of the house for you next week and I'm going to do another live next Tuesday night. Um, to sum up really the reason for doing these 12 episodes and maybe give you a bit of an inkling of what's coming with the next book. If you haven't already read this book, you might understand a bit more if you have. So sorry for going on there. And also, but by the way, I have no makeup on and I don't know when you can see this. I have had a stress reaction to the migraine and my eyes are covered in dermatitis. I look like I've got black eyes. I have um, horrendously raw and uh, dermatitis and it's all slip, uh, it's all cut. So I look a right mess. I'm a wreck and I look a right mess. So once we moved in, I am going to not be back to work properly until next Monday. I am taking a few days to properly unpack and to properly rest and do a bit of self-care because um, honestly, it's really needed. So back to this episode, episode 12, the final one. And I wanted to, in this episode, recap the 12 weeks and why I did it, um, why I decided to do this and why I decided to share with you the things that I've done to get me here today. Um, because, you know, it's no mean feat to buy a house cash and all the new furniture that we've, we've bought. It's been a journey for me from bankruptcy to a point in my life where I can afford to do this, I've got savings for my children. You've heard all of these stories over the 12 weeks and I wanted to share some of the things that I've learned 
and some of the things that I've done over the last 10 years so that you too can think about where you can take things in your life um, and create more abundance. That's, pro that's what we all want, to feel comfortable and abundant. And it's nice to feel that way. So I'm going to recap on the 12 weeks. And I started week one with forgiveness and gratitude. And it really, really is an important start because without that, you can't move forward. It holds you back. It keeps you where you are. And being able to forgive others and yourself is a real skill that has to be practiced. Some people can't do it at all, ever. They hold grudges and it holds them back personally. Me letting go of everything, all of the blame and letting go of all the people that may have hurt me and just saying, look, that's life and I need to get on and I'm responsible. I am responsible for me, really did release me 10 years ago and allowed me to move forward in a really positive way. So then I talked in week two about mindset. And again, that forgiveness took me to a place where I could keep that positive mindset. Everything was my responsibility. I accepted that responsibility and I was prepared to take responsibility for everything that happened going forward. And that's really important because if you don't do that, then you are never going to progress and you're certainly never going to be successful because even when it's bad, even the bad things that happen, you still need to take responsibility for them in order for you to be able to move forward and be better. That's the dog in the background barking. That might be the sky engineer. Somebody else will deal with him. I've got diggers out the back there, still on the building site, so I apologise for the uh, background noise. So in week three, I talked about what you have and what you need and really looking at what you've got. Get your ducks in a row living within your means um, in week four what you can do with what you have looking at assets and liabilities and the difference between assets and liabilities we covered that in week four in week five really dug deep into how to live within your means and i really for those that have read my book the life i won you will understand now how tight i got in terms of living within my means and how i did that i went from having an awful lot in life to having absolutely nothing and I mean nothing I'm not don't want to underplay this or overplay this but I had 30 pound in my bank account and my little car and that was it so I had to do something I had to learn to live within my means and then I had to learn to grow that um, week six I talked about accepting that it will take time you can't make magic happen and change things overnight. You have to accept that these things are going to take time. Some people are lucky um, and they do it really quickly. If they're launching a new product or business that really takes off, it's very rare. But what you'll find with those people is there's years and years of back work happened before that. And week seven, we looked at just planning for the next six months, just taking small chunks and saying, what am I going to do for the next six months? And in week eight, um, we talked about taking steps to make the changes happen. You are totally in control, going back to that, your responsibility, you're in control of what happens going forward. In week nine, we looked at planning for the long game, investments, and how that one choice for me of uh, making an investment and taking a risk with my pension has enabled me to buy this house that I'm currently living in. Um, week 10, we looked at studying and reading and investing in your own self-development and how important that was and what I did over the last 10 years uh, to invest in my self-development. In week 11, we talked about knowing exactly where you want to be, never quitting and having that vision. And I shared with you the detail of my vision and the script for my vision and how detailed I go in order to make sure that my mindset stays positive so that I can create the life that I dream of and that I want. Okay, so I'm sorry that's taken 10 minutes to do that, but I think it's important in week 12 to summarize all the, all the things that I've talked about in the last 12 weeks, because I am sharing this with you in order to help you to be able to improve your life um, and sh make changes and be more successful in whatever area that you want. Um, so today, the topic for today is about seeking help. 
And I do want to delve into this because the reality is that you need it. That's the reality of it, that we all need help. You cannot do things on your own. There are so many people out there that have already done what you want to do and that have been successful. You need to find them and find out how and seek help. You also need to value, value what you are. Um, you are your product, your service, your job, your life. And what I mean by that is, whatever you have decide, decided to be, whatever is your dream, whatever it is you're focusing on, whatever it is you want, you've got to value that. So for instance, if you want to be a coach, you want, uh, what I would say is, if that's what you're calling, if that's what you are being called to do is to help other people. And whether that's children, or whether it's women, whether it's men, whether it's teams or groups of people, you need to value your skills because they are unique. There are hundreds, no thousands, no probably millions of coaches out there, yeah? So how do they all make a living? That's the question I would ask you. They all make a living by focusing on their unique skills. What makes them them? Because people don't work with a coach. People work with a person that they resonate with that happens to be a coach offering a service. So first of all, you've got to find it, what it is you want to coach, what your calling is. Now I am, I'm gonna use me as, a, as an example. Excuse me, I've got water here. It's very dry up here. This is my new studio, by the way, I'll show you in a, minute, in, in a few minutes. But I want to talk about this um, using me as an example. So I'm a coach and I am a qualified leadership coach. I'm an NLP coach. I am a life coach, a confidence coach. Um, I also am a therapeutic art coach and art for relaxation. So I've got all of those, I've got six different coaching qualifications. I could choose any one of those and follow that path. But the reason I've got all of those qualifications is I really wanted to understand what was the best way to coach people. Then I wanted to understand who my customer, my client was going to be and how I was going to use my skills, not only as a coach, but as an artist and as a creative and as an author to help other women to be able to tap in to their own creativity. And creativity does not just have to show up in art or in writing or in crafts. It can show up anywhere. I was very creative as a store manager. I was one of the top performing store managers in my company because of my creative thinking. So creativity isn't just about you want to go and be an artist. It may be that you are a store manager and you want to be the best store manager but you need to be able to set yourself apart from others. And the only way you can do that is tap into your right brain, your creativity, and that will give you a different set, a different skill set to think differently. So in order for you to be able to do that, you need to seek help and you need to seek, seek the right help. So this is not a pitch for you all have to work with me. This is about what is it you want? What is it? What's, what's the barriers you want to break down? What is it you want to achieve in your life, in your job, in your business? What is it? And your first part, your first step to seeking help is to buy books or to watch online, free online videos. But if you do that all the time, so here's the warning. If you buy loads of books, watch lots of online stuff, sign up for courses, you become a consumer. You are a consumer of all of these different styles and products. Now, some people do this, they go on a course and then they come away and they've learned something and they're quite motivated and they think that they can then sell that. They can then package that and sell that. Now, that's not gonna work. It, people will see through that. People will not resonate with that. So what you've got to do is not allow yourself to be a consumer. You could spend the next 10 years consuming lots of different books and methods and opinions. Okay, so when I see, say seek help is how, I'm gonna ask this question. How serious are you about making change happen? 
How serious are you about the changes that you desire in your life, business, finances, relationships, health? How serious are you? Because if you are really serious, the best way to make change is to seek the right person to work with to enable you to adapt your thinking and release your creativity in order for you to be able to become the person you want to be. Now, I am not going to resonate with every single person out there, but there are lots of coaches that will. I know lots of other ladies who prefer to work with other females or, and that's fine because we've all got to find the right person. There is enough work for every single one of us. And that's what you've got to believe in. And if you are even thinking about going to be a coach and you are unsure of how to do that, then go and find yourself a coach, work with one, come up with your own individual things because you're not going to steal everything that that coach does. You're going to come up with your own individual skill set based on what you are really good at, what you, what calls you, what's in your heart. Now I'm working with a coach at the minute called Michelle Stonehill. She's a business coach. I'm working with her because I want to package what I've got to offer as a business and help women. And I want to do it in the best way possible. And I want to earn money from doing it. And I don't want to earn just a small amount of money. I want to earn a six figure package out of it. Impact seven figures, because why not? And that's okay. My money mindset is open to the fact that I can earn that. And this is where I'm saying seek help. I'm paying a lot of money to work with Michelle, but I've got high expectations of her being able to help me to come up with the right things in order to develop my business. Seek help and be prepared to pay the right person the right amount and value yourself and what you are charging if that's what you decide to do. So that's where I was going with that. And you will, when you make decisions to, to make change happen in your life, excuse me, there'll be lots of things that niggle you. There'll be lots of things that are giving you a gut feeling, that make you feel nervous, because you know the biggest barrier to making change in your life is actually your fears. Your fear of failure and your fear of success. Because if you are really successful, it's going to change your life. Well, isn't that a good problem to have? But still, we, we have this inbuilt fight or flight um, system within us that stops us doing anything that makes us feel nervous. And I've touched on this over the last 12 weeks, and this is a real big thing to focus on. Everything that you want to do, there'll be this little devil on your shoulder and it's your, it's your imposter syndrome and it's your little niggles there, your fight or flight, your natural inbuilt thought processes that protect you. Your brain, your subconscious will automatically protect you from doing anything that you feel is uncomfortable or might be a risk. So that's an automatic reaction and you need to learn to be able to get past that if you want to have all that you desire and be all that you desire to be. Now that's where you need help because this is where a coach or this is where I mentor or this is where a teacher or tutor or whatever way you decide to go will help you overcome those niggles and those good feelings and those things that are holding you back from being everything that you want to be. Now there are also some things in life, and again I can only use me as, a, as an example, sometimes you have to walk away in order to live your best life. So I'm going to go back to 10 years ago and I was bankrupt and I walked away from a life of abundance, not out of my own choice, out of circumstance and events at the time. But I walked away and said, right, OK, it's time to focus on me and turning my life around, me and my children, turning my life around so that I can turn theirs around. And sometimes you've got to walk away from something, put it in the past, do the forgiveness and gratitude in order for you to be great. So I knew by walking away and by going and living in my council house in Amble with my little car, 
that I was giving myself a really good start to be able to turn my life around. I walked away from drama, I walked away from relationships, I walked away from many things. I walked away from money and abundance and the need and the want for that in order to get myself back in order so that I could create it again for myself. And I would do it again. I've just walked away from actually quite a successful business and I've let that go. My Rothko Wills and estate planning business, I've let that go in order to focus on my new business. And I, it's a huge risk. That's a leap of faith. I've let everything else go. I even let, I had a holiday cottage that I've had for years and years that was good money that I just cleaned on a Saturday. I'd kept it from my cleaning days because it was local. It was like two minutes away from my house. I've let that go. And these are bit, once you let all that income go, I am completely reliant now on what I do with this business. That's a huge leap of faith. And sometimes you've got to walk away and let things go in order for you to be able to move forward. So it'll be interesting now um, for, to see where this goes. And what I want to continue to do for you is a weekly half hour program so that you can stay with me throughout the progress of the business, what's happening and how I am developing it, the strategies that I'm bringing into my business. I want to share that with you so that you can see that it is possible. And I hope that you appreciate that that is why I'm doing it. So let me talk for a minute about, so th th this episode was really about seeking help. I think you've got the message now. I've touched on this quite a lot over the 12 weeks. It is so important. So what I want you to understand today is exactly Excuse me a minute while I get this piece of paper that I've left on the floor. You have to bear in mind that I am moving house, I've got stuff everywhere. I want you to be able to understand how hard I have worked in trying to understand who I want to help. And I want to read out to you um, the description of the woman that I want to help when I've created this coaching program and what she is like before I have worked with her and what she is like after I've worked with you, with her. And this is what I'm saying about, you know, value your own um, skills and service that you've got to offer. You've got to really nail this down and say, this is who I want to work with. So I call this lady creative chaos. This is where she is at the moment. This person is typically female and she's aged between 28 and 45. She's either married with children or a single mum. This lady lives with creative confusion and will compensate by buying lots of nice things for instant gratification. She does this for inspiration because she feels blocked herself. She was once really creative in her thinking and abilities. However, life, children, trauma or divorce have blurred her thoughts and ability to take action. This brain fog impacts in all areas of her life and limits her ability to come up with positive forward facing solutions. It is like she is held in space and time, unable to do what she is capable of. She copies others rather than coming up with her own ideas, not because she is unable, but because she no longer feels like she is good enough or worthy. These negative feelings transfer to other areas and leave her describing herself in a negative way when in actual fact, she is just in creative chaos. She wants to find out, she wants to find a way out, but feels trapped. Despite not feeling good enough, she knows deep down that she once had these skills and talents, but she needs help to rediscover them. She may currently be, or once was really successful in her career, but may feel like it is too linear and structured. So she feels like there is something missing. If she is considering launching a creative business, she is comparing herself to others rather than being her true self. It feels like there are only three sides to the perfect square and what is missing is her self-expression. She knows that if she could just find the time and motivation that she would open up a new world of ideas and talents. She is ready for help, 
but maybe time and cash poor and looking for an affordable investment that fits into her life. She actually needs this until she can think differently. So that's the person that I am trying to help. And I know that there are lots of this person out there. And this is what will happen once this person has been through my 12 month program. I then change the, the, the description of this woman from creative chaos to creative power. This lady knows what good looks like and she has the ability to communicate it in many different ways to multiple levels of society. She is a trailblazer and can generate outlandish and often game-changing ideas for powerful visual impact in her field. She stands out from the crowd is proud of it and is never, is never afraid to be different. This lady knows what power she has in her creativity and that she can transfer it to any area of her life with ease and flair to create success anywhere in her life. She is a leader, an ideas person, charismatic, and people are drawn to her uniqueness. So that is the lady that I am trying to help and what will happen once her confidence is back with her creative thinking. This is the power of creativity and this is what I have tried to put into the, to the programme that is coming up on my website. Now my website is going to be a bit later than I initially planned. It was going to launch at the end of October. It's now going to be nearer to the end of November. Um, now I never stress about this and this is another thing that you know I'd like to share over these 12 weeks. Nothing stresses me. If deadlines change, deadlines change. Things happen for people. My photographer can't do my branding photography on the date I originally wanted. So I've had to book it for mid-November. That changes the date that I can launch my website. My web website um, provider and the person who's building my website have gone, phew, thank the Lord, because this is more complicated than we initially wanted it, uh, expected it to be so it fits in with everybody else and i'd rather launch it a bit later and launch it right that's the, that's the key for me so i want to help that lady i've just described and the reason i've shared that with you is i really want you to think about you and what it is you need and if you're thinking of building a business who is it you want to help what do they look like before and after and what difference would it make to you if you actually sought the help that you need at this moment in time. I have my first full one hour call with Michelle tomorrow, my coach, and I know how powerful that call is going to be. And I'm still in chaos and I won't have unpacked everything. In fact, no, she's, it's Thursday. I've got my first call, not tomorrow, because all my big stuff's moving here tomorrow. So I've got my first call with Michelle on Thursday at 10 a.m. Um, I've spoken to two of her people already. I've done all the preparation work on my coaching program and now I'm ready to go into this call and this is going to be a big one for me because this is really going to pin down my strategy and I'm going to be challenged. Um, she's going to challenge me, she's going to challenge my thinking, she's going to challenge my ideas and that's what I need in order to make sure that this business is the best for the client that I want to serve. So I'm looking forward to that. That for me is really motivating being able to, to work with somebody. And that's what this video is about. I want you to consider the same. So we're at the end of the 12 weeks, but I am going to do another live next Tuesday just to sum up and talk a little bit more in some detail about what my program looks like. So what happens each month? What sort of things would you be learning and changing if you were deciding to go and do that? What would the investment be in that? How much difference would it make to you as a person so that that's the sort of thing I'll be covering next week and it's the first time I'll have really shared the detail of other other than amoeba meeting in Newcastle it's the first time I'll have really shared any of the detail of the content of this upcoming um, 12 month uh, course that I'm writing at the moment so I'm going back to unpack some more stuff have an absolutely amazing week, guys. And next week, I'm going to be filming this video of the new house so you can see every room. Um, I did say I'd show you my studio, but look, honestly, nothing is properly unpacked yet. This is it, though. I've got my own studio with a desk. I've got three easels uh, up there already. 
Um, I've got a few more things to come in here and then I'll get it organised. And This is where I'll be filming from now on. Absolutely amazing. It'll be covered in paintings, etc. Um, so I'm a happy bunny. And I will see you again next week. Maybe I'll be able to put some makeup on and my eyes won't be as sore. Certainly won't be as knackered. Um, and I look forward to uh, being able to share a little bit more with you next week. Have a fantastic week.